Hey everyone, welcome back. And in today's video, I'll be covering what you need to know about using a VPN in China, which ones still work reliably in 2025, and how to set them up so you can access sites like YouTube, Gmail, and WhatsApp without a hitch. Now the truth is, while ExpressVPN used to be one of the top choices for this, it's just not reliable in China anymore. Servers drop frequently, and it's become too inconsistent to recommend, at least for this specific use case. But the good news is there are still a couple solid VPNs that are working well right now, and in this video, I'll walk you through those options, how to get them installed properly before you travel, and what to expect once you're actually on the ground. And as always, I'll include links in the description to the full reviews and any available discounts, so feel free to check those out if you're interested. So to start, the internet in China is heavily restricted. We're talking about the Great Firewall here, meaning services like Google, Instagram, YouTube, and even WhatsApp are all blocked by default. And while that's frustrating enough, what makes it tougher is that not every VPN can get around those blocks consistently. To work reliably in China, a VPN needs more than just strong encryption. It also has to stay connected under pressure, work on both Android and iOS, and have a kill switch in place to protect your data in case the connection drops. That last part is really important, especially when you're on public Wi-Fi or mobile data, since even a quick disconnect can leave your real IP exposed. Now, before you even step foot in China, you'll want to make sure your VPN is fully installed and ready to go. That's because once you're inside, VPN websites are usually blocked, and App Store access can be limited, especially if you're using a Chinese Apple ID. For iPhone users, the best move is to create or log into a US-based Apple ID so you can access apps like Surfshark or Proton VPN from the App Store. And if you're on Android, the setup's a little more flexible. You can sideload the app using an APK file or grab it from a third-party store like Cool APK. But even if you're already in China and don't have a VPN yet, there is still a way around it. Just reach out to the VPN provider support team. They usually have mirror links or alternate domains to help you download the app. It's a common issue and usually gets resolved pretty quickly. Now, as of 2025, the VPN landscape in China has shifted quite a bit. ExpressVPN and NordVPN, two of the more well-known providers, just haven't held up. In recent testing, most ExpressVPN servers either wouldn't connect at all or would drop within minutes. And while the app itself still has great features like obfuscation and split tunneling, they're just not enough to keep things running smoothly inside China anymore. NordVPN had similar issues. On iOS, we had to set it up manually using IKEV2. And even then, it took more than a dozen attempts just to get one server connected. Android seemed slightly better, but the connection still wasn't reliable enough to recommend for most users. But here's where things get better. Surfshark has been the most consistent performer by far. On Android, it's fast and steady across all three major Chinese carriers. Its no borders mode automatically detects when you're behind a firewall and routes you to a server that works. And even on iOS, where VPN apps can be a little more finicky. It's still holding up well, as long as you're using a non-China Apple ID to install the app. So whether you're trying to get on Google, watch something on YouTube, check your inbox on Gmail, or message friends on WhatsApp, Surfshark continues to work, even during peak usage times or national holidays, when censorship tends to ramp up. Now, if you're looking for a backup option, Proton VPN is a strong second choice. It's a little more limited, especially on iOS where stability isn't always great, but it's still a secure and privacy-focused service that can get the job done for occasional use. Setting it up on Android is pretty straightforward, but Windows users will want to be comfortable with a manual open VPN setup. It's not the most beginner-friendly, but if you're after a backup VPN or want something open source with a good reputation for privacy, Proton VPN is worth considering. So once you've chosen your VPN, the next step is making sure it's configured properly before you arrive in China. And the most important thing here is installing the app and logging in ahead of time, ideally on every device you plan to use. That way, even if you run into trouble later on, you'll at least have the core app in your account ready to go. Also, it's a good idea to reach out to Surfshark or Proton VPN support teams before your trip. They can give you a list of servers that are currently performing best in China, plus any mirror links in case you lose access to their main site while you're there. Now, now, depending on your mobile carrier, your experience with the VPN can vary. China Mobile has generally provided the most consistent results, especially with Surfshark while China Telecom and China Unicom tend to be more restrictive. It's not guaranteed either way, but checking with the VPN's live chat can give you a heads up on which network is performing best at the moment. As for your VPN settings, you'll wanna make sure the kill switch is enabled. This blocks all internet access if the VPN disconnects, which is crucial for keeping your data secure. And when it comes to choosing a protocol, setting it to automatic is usually best. Surfshark, for example, will try the fastest and most secure option first, but you can always switch to something like OpenVPN with T 
TCP if you're having trouble connecting. That can help disguise your VPN traffic as regular HTTPS activity, which is much harder for the Great Firewall to detect. And if you do start running into issues, like the app taking too long to connect, or a website suddenly not loading, there are a few simple tricks that can help. Try waiting a bit longer, especially if your connection is slow. Restarting your device can refresh the app, or switch to a different server if one stops working. China tends to block specific IPs, not the entire VPN service. Here's another helpful tip. Clear your browser's cache and cookies if websites aren't loading correctly. Sometimes your old location gets saved, and that can interfere with what the VPN is trying to do. Now one quick note about legality, since this comes up a lot. VPNs that aren't government approved are technically banned in China, but that doesn't mean you'll get in trouble for using one, especially as a visitor. So far, there haven't been any public cases of foreigners being penalized for VPN use, but it's still smart to stay low key. That means don't talk about it publicly and avoid using VPNs for anything that's clearly illegal, like downloading copyrighted content. Also, if you're hearing about something called airports or proxy nodes as an alternative to VPNs, these are advanced proxy style tools that can work in China, but they take more effort to set up and aren't really beginner friendly. They're mostly used by advanced users or developers. So if you're just looking for something simple and secure, you're better off sticking with Surfshark or Proton. So to recap, Surfshark is easily the best VPN for China right now. It works on both Android and iOS, has stable performance across all major networks, and includes features like no borders mode and a kill switch to keep you protected. Proton VPN is a solid backup choice, especially if you like its open source foundation or just want a second option in case Surfshark ever hits it's a snag. And again, if you're interested in either of these VPNs, you'll find links to pricing and discounts, mirror links, and full in-depth reviews in the description down below. So make sure to check that out. Besides that, hopefully you found this guide helpful. If so, please leave a thumbs up as I always appreciate that. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave those down in the comments below as I love getting to answer as many of those as I can. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.